dedicated to French elections. So welcome again to French elections webinar dedicated totally to French elections trading and past session recap results. Today we will show you some political views. Chris will go with possible political situation and economical situation that might happen in the near term and then I will go with setups for this week. So uh, before we begin, standard risk disclaimer explaining that online educational materials are developed by Admiral Markets Estonia for a global audience. So take into consideration that information is not suitable for everyone. Admiral Markets UK LTD takes no responsibility for information accuracy. This is solely my opinion and Chris's opinion and this webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. Risk disclosure statement stating all possible risks associated with Forex market. By accepting the risk, you're also proceeding further with us. So first Chris will go with his part explaining whole situation with French elections and then in like 10 minutes I will present you with setups for this week. So stay tuned and let's make some pips. I'm not sure, guys, that we have any sound. I think that Chris has problems with sound. Oh, yeah, sorry it's about okay that. now. Okay, apologies for that. I guess my uh, mic was muted by accident. Thank you for the warning. So, I was saying a lot, but I'll start again. So, basically, yesterday, of course, we had a big major political event. In France, as you probably know, the second round of the pre French presidential elections was a battle between Macron Macron and Le Pen, and Macron was basically a centrist independent, or is, and Le Pen is from the far right. So as expected, Macron took the win by about 65%, but more importantly though is the fact that uh, we see uh, a, a significant victory by a centrist independent. Now the interesting thing about Macron is that he doesn't have actually a background in politics he doesn't have an official held position uh, so far. So in that regard, he actually resembles a bit Trump because they both have not held office. But of course, their political visions are totally different. Uh, the political vision of Macron is a centrist uh, in Europe, of course, and uh, Trump is on the right spectrum of the politics in the US. So there's a substantial difference. But interesting enough, they do share this non-political background. Of course, after two uh, substantial political events last year, the Brexit and Trump's victory uh, against a, let's say, a global, pro-globalization political establishment uh, candidate, uh, Clinton, uh, we saw this new battle. And uh, this time around, though, the political establishment side a threat of relief in a way but I guess also a lot of pro-Europeans and pro-EU uh, citizens did the same because Le Pen ultimately would have shake, shaken the foundation uh, of the EU quite substantially. All right, there was that potential for a big shakeup. It didn't happen as yet. So let's discuss this a bit for a few minutes and then it's going to discuss uh, the trading setups that seem interesting based on the new events. And uh, basically here you see a quick overview of the percentages, 65 versus 35. Now that's a pretty decent win, 30 point gap. But keep in mind that 15 years ago when Le Pen's father, Le Pen, was in the race, 
facing Jacques Chirac in 2002, the gap was wider. It was 85 versus 15 percent. That was a blastering win. 65 versus 35 is, is good too, but you can see 20 points less than 15 years ago. So it seems that the sentiment has shifted. Of course, different candidates, different times 15 years later, but something to keep in mind that uh, the EU establishment, perhaps the pro-EU politicians and political parties have to keep in mind, have to be careful of a shift in sentiment and have to perhaps look for solutions that take away the uh, annoyance, take away the, uh, the difficulties that ordinary EU citizens are feeling towards the EU. So that is something that, despite this result, I think has to be kept in mind. But that's just our opinion. I guess that that opinion is shared by others as well. Here you see, though, the numbers uh, of the political map on the right. And you can see that uh, mostly red, some blue dots uh, in the north, especially uh, for Le Pen. So who is Macron and what can we expect in the next five years? Because the French president uh, keeps his position for five years. Macron can also then choose to uh, face another election five years from now. Hollande chose not to due to his unpopularity. He, decide not, he decided not to take part in this year's race. Macron, of course, could do that five years from now and extend that up to 2027 if he gets elected. So Macron basically uh, is wants to work with the EU, sees partners in the EU, wants to go to the capitals, talk to Germany, lead with Germany, totally different candidate than Le Pen, who is a lot more skeptical, who is a lot more uh, dismissive of the potential of the EU. So what he wants to do, he wants to basically uh, get some budget and investments in the EU going, wants a spending plan, try to get fiscal policy to, to stimulate, I think, the economy, perhaps maybe promote the economies in, in, the, uh, in the parts of the European Union where the economies are not doing so well yet, uh, perhaps in the South. Let's see if that happens or not, but perhaps he will try to, uh, to share the burden a bit. Let's see. He was talking about deregulating the labor system in France, aspiring closer France-Germany relations, as I said, but also, of course, considering the fact that he has not held political office, we've got to keep in mind that I think, or we think, that uh, there is some risk involved, of course, if anything goes not as planned or he faces some potential problems regarding terror, perhaps. Uh, he might need to, to, to prove kind of his, his ability to control situations despite maybe the fact that he has a bit less experience uh, than typically expected, perhaps, or seen with presidents, all right? So he might have to keep an eye on that. So these are things, developments, that we can all expect and uh, we'll have to keep an eye on for the next uh, months and years, in fact. So last point, main things to keep an eye on uh, are the fact that, uh, for the moment, the EU has averted the crisis. New French elections for the parliament are expected in June, by the way. Uh, in that regard, uh, his party, Macron's party, will have to will try to gain some political traction there, too. That would be useful uh, as a president to have more backing in the, uh, in the parliament elections as well. That's this June, next month. And let's see what kind of new direction uh, the independent candidate, which is, uh, of course, uh, an interesting change as well, uh, can deliver. What can he uh, basically, how can he lead France and the EU into perhaps a better direction? There are going to be challenges. On the right side, you'll see a few of them. Can the economic engine uh, finally pick up speed in the EU, start to uh, keep that unemployment rate decreasing, try to uh, get the uh, inflation up a bit, try to get uh, people to uh, spend more, invest more, try to get participation in the economy, which leads to higher wages and then a little bit of inflation, right? So can that engine grow? There are going to be internal economic and political divisions, so that's going to be tough to organize anything. Technical, techno, 
technological changes as well are going to be facing uh, unemployment and employment rates strongly in the next five to ten years plus of course demographics and older generation older uh, working force is going to be uh, occurring in the EU year by year that's going to get worse uh, and that's just the demographic change that it is going to occur in the next decades so these are all things that uh, the leaders will have to face will have to deal with let's see how uh, they do that in the next few years with Macron. So that was it for uh, you know just a quick uh, political economic kind of uh, introduction to what we could expect next year uh, or so. And now let's talk about the markets and let's take a look at setups. Thanks, Chris. Uh, excellent. I uh, totally agree with you. So definitely, uh, that is the thing uh, with the new president. Uh, the fact is that, uh, well, uh, we will actually continue now uh, with, uh, with our setups. And the fact is that the problem still persists within the European Union and France. And definitely Macron will not have an easy time uh, regulating uh, between all parties involved in uh, European Union and France. But the great thing is that, uh, well, at least uh, for the time being, we can be calm. And from trading perspective, there were no and there were no surprises like Brexit or uh, GBP Black Swan or Swiss National Bank. As we presume, the price was already priced in the market, so price action actually was not that uh, surprising, as everything was already priced in the market. So now we can actually continue with uh, our session recap. So let's see uh, what we will trade this week. And first, let's see uh, previous week results. So Euro dollar positional trade was good for 100 pips or didn't qualify because uh, the trade came four, five pips above BOC level. GBP dollar qualified for 95 pips. Australian dollar qualified for 130 pips. Australian dollar, this is a uh, okay, alternative, but let's go just with our 130 because 50 per, uh, when, I, when I published uh, on Twitter uh, 50 pips uh, later, just a little bit later, the trade came with 130 pips. So you might actually got 50 or 130. It doesn't matter. The trade was that good. Pound yen didn't qualify, dollar cat breakout for plus 30, alternative plus 50. Without bonus trade for Euro, uh, Australian dollar, uh, Gerard and uh, other guys from Twitter told me that uh, definitely the best trade for them was Euro, uh, Euro Australian dollar. That was not in the session recap, but instead uh, I actually showed it during uh, live webinar so that was live analysis so total pips pool including bonus trade was 355 to 455 an excellent session recap huge number of pips pool trade of the week australian dollar and pound dollar so uh, this is what happened for the previous week now we will go with the rules and setups and then i will show you uh, charts so i will show you results so give price a breathing room, and usually you can enter within 50 pips of the predicted level if it's in agreement with your system. I uh, always count uh, POC zones. It's called a POC zone. It's a buffer zone for our trade, and definitely it's the zone where we can place our trades. You can use scaling it if you wish, but do your own trade and money management. Respect your stop loss always. We take only one position per listed pair, either position or alternative trade, whichever hits first. First touch of the zone is the most profitable. That is why, guys, we need to focus on the first touch. So first touch of the zone is always most profitable. Positional trades are trend trades. Alternative trades are counter trend trades. Breakout trades and scalp trade levels can be traded independently of any position. Depending on time and volatility, we use profit stop after 20 pips and not less. Session recap setups are valid for today, tomorrow, and sometimes the day after tomorrow. 
pay attention to my Twitter updates. Scalp trades should be done at or very close to import and support resistance levels. Add these levels to your system, pay attention to trend. And the term pips pool is the maximum available number of pips you could have made on recap entries. Uh, so uh, I wish you all a great welcome. Uh, Bob, Angel, Hazelhoff, Mario, all people that are here. And uh, we have more than 110 people at this point. So I expect more to join up. So let's see uh, results of previous week. Euro dollar was in uptrend. We have positional buy 0.855, 0.820 it was stop loss. But the trade, you see, the trade went very, very close to our entry position here. And then it spiked very, very high. Uh, trade setup that was that's supposed to be here at this point. So it didn't catch up exactly at POC zone, but slightly above POC zone. For me, I didn't catch the trade, but some people told me that actually they caught uptrend on euro dollar just a little bit uh, above POC zone, somewhere around this region. Pound dollar was an excellent trade setup, I need to say. We had positional buy at 28.6, price came to 28.63. Uh, the price uh, spiked uh, to 29.50 zone. Excellent pound movement. Excellent setup on pound. I was very very happy. And guys, you still you you can see that. Well, as I presume, pound should recover midterm. Uh, Brexit will not have such a big impact. No matter what uh, people say, UK is still a very very strong economy, and uh, they will still be the financial hub in Europe, at least for the time being. Uh, but of course, we might see some corrections in pound dollar. And uh, guys, today, I think according to uh, to Bill Wolf rules uh, and my own charting of uh, Wolf waves, one, two, three, four, five, today the 0.5 uh, appeared on pound dollar exactly at, at ETA or estimated time at arrival. So maybe uh, today the price uh, will start some downward retracement. Uh, if we don't see the break of 1.300, I think pound dollar will drop. So let's see, but just for your information, okay? This is the slide from the previous week, okay? So from the previous week, guys, we had a buy trade that was initiated here. This vertical line always means the same thing. That is the time of our webinar. So straight after the webinar, the price kicked our POC zone. You see what happened. Huge spike, okay, to the upside. Then another, but this is what we count, the first rejection. Australian dollar, I said, be warned, RBA decision. I didn't trade during RBA decision, but still, if you traded this setup, well, this was definitely the best trade for the previous week because the price came in the POC zone, 50 pips. So you see, sell trade, I said 75.70. POC zone is 75.55, 75.70, 75.85. 75, so 15 pips above, 15 pips below the medium point. With stop loss, you, we, we don't move, guys, stop loss. That is why our trades are very good and usually profitable, because we don't move our stop loss. So definitely, guys, remember, when you see 75, 70, or any number, have in mind that POC zone is 15 pips above at and 15 pips below this number here. That is our POC zone, and stop loss is never, ever moved. So you see what happened? Straight rejection from our POC zone. Pound yen didn't qualify for an entry because I said 143.50 should have been the price where uh, pound yen uh, could reject but the thing is that 143.50 uh, was not reached so this was not qualified trade dollar cad uh, we had two positions on dollar cad that were initiated first one was break above 36 uh, 96 so guys you know what i always say you can trade breakout setups independently of any position. So pound 
uh, so dollar cad could have been traded with a breakout setup but also you could have traded it with alternative seller setup that kicked around 37.30 stop loss was not reached so this is where it rejected so first we got into breakout then we sold so guys a lot of pips to be made for the previous week really a lot of pips and this is what people were tweeting me euro australian dollar 300 pips 70 pips 80 pips and so on and so on so guys a lot of lot of lot of pips guys and i hope that you caught it up uh, i would be very 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 happy if you actually made to grab it uh, so mario was saying uh, he didn't catch so much but well at least mario you had something out of it uh, Angel is asking, uh, how were you then and how was in Ljubljana? Ljubljana was great, Zagreb was great too, excellent uh, people, excellent traders. Uh, so a lot of people, more than 400 combined. Uh, well, unfortunately, in, in Croatia, in Zagreb, that is the capital of Croatia, there was raining. So not all people who wanted to come could come. Actually, more than 330 people signed up, but they couldn't come all of them because it was a rainy day but uh, yet again it was great you see you can hear my voice it's a little bit sore but uh, that is because i usually speak without any microphone when i have uh, live seminars and uh, well i'm usually yelling so <laughs> you know uh, my sore is my voice is a little bit sore uh, but it doesn't matter it was very very good so yeah now guys uh, uh, we can actually uh, move to our setups for this week. Uh, Angel is saying we are waiting for you in Bulgaria. Yeah, I hope that I will visit Bulgaria. Also have a seminar there. Mark is asking, are you outside? Mark, no, I'm inside. Roy is saying, uh, come to Dubai. Yes, I would also love to come to U United Arab <laughs> to Arabian Emirates. Uh, because I know that a lot of lot of people from there are also following me, especially Abu Dhabi and Dubai, yeah, the center of finance in in uh, United Arabian Emirates. Okay, yeah, United Arab Emirates, indeed, wrong. Thanks for correction. I usually say UAE, so <laughs> yeah, UAE. Okay, so guys, uh, here. Euro dollar, yeah, I, I showed you results, so now this is what we can actually trade. Uh, this trade I, I show today, guys. I already showed this trade today, so we will not, uh, you can actually take it because if you want, but be careful, guys. Be careful, stop loss, yes, Euro dollar is in the zone. It came in the zone after I did the analysis. But be careful. I need to tell you, this is not, well, I need to say 60-40 for this setup. Not so, 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 uh, I'm not so convinced, although this could reject, because now, while I'm talking, the price is exactly at 1.0930. So, 30 pip stop loss, guys. Okay. 9.09. Uh, oh, this uh, TP, you can actually uh, dismiss it because TP1 is 0980 and TP2 is, if it happens, 1020, guys. Okay? 1020. An alternative cell, I will correct this because, I don't know, this, this slide is, was not uh, saved. I actually didn't save the slide. Now I will correct it. Just give me a few seconds and I will actually show you uh, correct dollar setup so buy setup is uh, happening now so I think we will not go with uh, sell setup but in the case guys you dismiss this setup then uh, you might actually go with a sell setup so uh, this is correct setup okay for uh, euro dollar okay so uh, 0.930 is buy, so if you want to trade, you can do it now, okay? Uh, 0.900, stop. This is what, again, this didn't save, okay? Uh, I will do it again, 
Okay, so the first target is 0, 0980, the second target is 1020. If this happens, this will be a spike in another bullish rally. But still, guys, you need to be careful because deeper correction might also happen. Okay, so this is correct setup. Uh, bigger correction might also happen, so be, be careful, okay? The only thing where I would go with breakout sell is if 0820 breaks to the downside, then sell setup might uh, come into play uh, targeting 0780 and 0730, the close of the gap. 2% of risk, you need to put stop loss above one hour high or use 2% of risk, putting your stop loss 100 or 200 pips because this could be the close of the gap. But as I always say, risk is fixed, stop loss is dynamic. So dynamic stop loss for this breakout sell if it happens. Until then, guys, as I say, 0.92930 is positional buy 30 pip stop if you make something out of it protect your trade because it might correct okay so this is it now i can show you my uh, chart and uh, i already did the analysis today but it doesn't hurt that i show you again so guys you can see here we have also a trend line here uh, this is also w uh, or weekly l4 support uh, this is the zone, okay, so you see the price is respecting my zone, POC, uh, but the problem is it already tried to reject today, so that is why uh, I'm a little bit suspicious about uh, this uh, seminar, so that is, uh, okay, now I will show you, that is, that is why I think it could still go a little bit lower. You know, guys, when, when price uh, reaches to, to some point, when it gets to some point of a potential reversal, we need to be very, very careful. This is it, guys. This is the analysis that I did today. So the price came in our POC zone. We can see a retail gap here. Okay, retail gap here. And you see, but again, this is set up that you might trade but be careful as i say because it might still drop okay that is why stop loss is only 30 pips uh, and of course add two to, to five pips of the spread to cover up for it pound dollar is in uptrend we might see positional buy around 2840 stop loss 2790 2960 sell 2970 guys because of wool wave because of stop loss here TP is 2840, uh, but guys, uh, another thing, uh, if you want to sell, you can do it soon, even though the price is not into POC zone, I think this could be a sell, because I already did the analysis on Wolf Wave today, today is ETA estimated time at arrival, and definitely guys, I think that pound dollar could actually drop. Let me see uh, if I have the chart here. I did it on daily. Yes, guys, this is it. Daily chart. This is how I did wool wave. My own wool wave. I didn't use any indicator. You know that I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of wool waves. And I really, I, I read a whole lot of material. And I also incorporated it with my Camarilla pivots. Okay, and key, here, guys, with Camarilla pivots. Uh, you see, uh, this is quarterly uh, H4 pivot. It started to reject. This is resistance now. A huge resistance, guys, here. A lot of historical sellers from daily perspective. I am in a sell trade on my real account. My sell trade was initiated at 29.40. I put 60 pip stop loss. So you need to know this is now a, a live trading. You need to know that I, I trade this live candle. On my live account, I'm in a trade, guys. Okay, I'm in a trade on my live account. Uh, it's actually daily, daily. Okay, uh, 
GBP dollar, a lot of guys potential setups. Uh, I can actually show you also my live account now. Okay, just give me a few seconds, guys. Here, <laughs> you might be a little bit confused, but this is how it looks. Uh, don't worry, I I can manage all these lines. One, two, three, four, five lines. Uh, this is how you see my charting here. These trend lines. This is estimated time at arrival here. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. A lot of sell setups. Also, I would go with sell stops if it gets there. So, uh, but I will definitely, definitely, I will. Uh, I uh, okay. You didn't see it. Then again. Only if it breaks below 2840, I will add these sell stops. Until then, I'm selling, guys. I'm selling here. I'm selling there. One, two, three, four, five. Trend line here. So you see, I'm in a sell trade. Uh, I'm not in a big risk. Uh, only 60 pips of a risk. 0 0.40 is my uh, sell entry. Uh, also here, my live account that I also trade on Wednesdays. I wanted to share this with you. Uh, you need to be careful. But as you see, I'm in this trade. So guys, again, uh, this is a little bit clearer screen. It's not my working screen. This is for analysis. Uh, one, two, guys, three, four, five. Uh, complete wool wave with exact estimated time at arrival. This is today. And according to Bill Wolf theory of wool waves, and according to my expanded theory on Camarilla, this is the confluence zone on daily. So I'm expecting a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, retracement. At least, I mean, I would be happy because this is like a daily trading opportunity. My entry is 29.40. Uh, I would be happy if I make something around 100 pips on this trade. So let's let's see. But as I say, guys. If you want to trade, you can do it now because then if you do it, positional buy trade would have been probably neglected and we will not trade buy trade. In that case, guys, you might even hope for a TP below 28.40, maybe 27.90 or something. Okay? So you need, you need to, uh, if you want to sell, well, you need to put the stop loss of 70, 75 pips, risk 1 or 2% per trade maximum TP2840, but as I say, if I see that it, it's breaking uh, 2840 like a knife through butter, then I might go with additional sales, and I will not close the trade. So this is a trade, live trade that, I'm, that I showed you during this webinar. Usually I do it on Wednesday, but it doesn't hurt. So guys, it, it, it still is very, very close to the zone, sell zone, 29.55, 70, 85, stop loss, 30, 0, 0 plus, let's say, 5 pips to cover up for spread. Let's see. Australian dollar, sell trade, 74.30, 74.80, stop, uh, 73.10 is TP, buy trade, 73.00, stop loss, 72.70, TP, 74.20. Okay, so this is Australian dollar, guys. So Australian dollar uh, possible sell 74.30. Let me show you the screen. Okay, we go to one hour chart. One hour chart, guys. Why 74.30? Because we have a lot of lot of confluence here. Okay, double top, the daily H3, uh, EMA 89, historical sellers here. So this looks like failed inverted head and shoulders pattern. So uh, I think that we could actually uh, we could uh, sell if the price gets around 74.30 zone, or buy if the price gets a little bit lower 73.10. 73.10, it will be very close to L4 weekly support. Uh, yeah, I will go through all of your questions just a little bit later when I finish with. Uh, presentation. And then we go with pound yen. Uh, 144.95 could be a buy trade. 144.60 stop. 146.00 TP. Again, pound yen looks like a little bit overbought to me. 
it, it, it really goes up uh, really, really. It's a huge rally on pound yen. But as I say, every trend needs to have some retracement. Being a professional trader, I'm always waiting for a retracement. So, guys, uh, that is what I suggest that you also do. Uh, still, guys, if we see a retracement uh, from the retail gap low from, uh, to the exact high here, you see I'm not that convinced. Uh, that pound dollar, that pound yen should go without any retracement to the upside. But yet again, at least for 23.6, you know what I say about 23.6. I always say uh, 23.6 is a good retracement only if the trend is that strong. And in pound yen, the trend is that strong. Uh, the retail gap has been closed here at this point. So this is an interim low. This is now an interim high, so 23.6 stands at POC zone L4, 144.90 here, uh, 80. So if this is the zone, possible buy trades could, could kick in around 145.10, 144.95, and 144.80. So that is POC zone, guys. 50 pip buffer to the both sides. Stop loss 144.60, TP 146.00. Clear, nothing to hide, nothing to show wrongly. Very clear setups as always. And okay, so this is it. Let me just take a little bit of lemonade and I will proceed. Okay, so let's proceed. Pound yen. And finally, dollar CAD, dollar CAD uptrend, positional buy trade 36.35, stop 35.90, TP 37.90, alternative sell 38.00, stop loss 38.30, TP 36.70. So dollar CAD is in uptrend. Daniel asked me today about dollar CAD, and I said I will do it. This is what I think. Definitely uh, uptrend dollar CAD, but we need guys. We really need to have. To have it a little bit lower. So if we, if we zoom in to one hour time frame, uh, you will see that uh, 36, 35 is the spot where, well, it's very, very, you see, it's very clear. It's actually, let's say, triple bottom here. Also, a lot of buyers, historical buying from this spot. So 36, 35 could be. Okay, so this could be the zone 36.50, and of course to the lower side 36.20. The stop loss is 35.90. So if it gets there, I think the price could proceed to the upside. Also, four hour, you see, uptrend, uh, triple bottom also can be seen here. And look at this, uh, a sell trade could come around 38.00. So 38.00 could be a sell trade. Uh, here I will zoom out. Let's try daily. Wicks that have been rejected in the past from uh, 38. Okay, so if we put this to 38, you can see it here. A lot of rejections in the past. Okay, here. So I think this could actually happen again. 3800, sell 3830, stop 3670 potential target. So this was it. Now I can cover your questions. I will roll slides again. And then, guys, I will go to your questions. So first, Euro dollar. Pound dollar, Australian dollar, pound yen, so here, 
again, euro dollar, pound dollar, Australian dollar, pound yen, and dollar cat. Now, uh, let's see questions. Australian dollar cat. Australian dollar CAD, let's see. Honestly, I don't trade Australian dollar CAD that much. It should be here. I'm not sure why I don't see it here, but let's see the symbol. Okay, Forex miners here. Australian dollar CAD. Let's see. Quick scan. This looks like inverted head and shoulders here. So if this drops here to this point. Gerard, I think you can buy it. It's somewhere around 1.0066. You see here, this is potential, but it, this looks like, you see, this could be the, the shoulder and this could reject, although this looks like it could reject from this spot. So I would go with buy Australian dollar cat. Yeah, Australian dollar cat. Uh, Yes, this, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, Angel is asking, uh, can I take a look at gold? Okay, one by one. I will answer all of your questions. This really dropped heavily. And uh, Angel, from risk to reward perspective, I think this could be a buy trade from risk to reward because you see this is double bottom here. Double bottom, 1223.35. And uh, this is very, very close to actually making a small inverted head and shoulders. So I think this could potentially reject. And the zone you see is just, just, just below the price. So if it gets in the zone, I think you could start buying it. Lois is asking uh, do about dollar yen. Okay, dollar yen, Lois. This is dollar yen. Definitely uptrend. But uh, you see, this could be lean uh, W. So this is going up. If you want to sell it, then I suggest you wait for monthly H4 in confluence with weekly L5. Historical sellers here. So 113.50 to 113.65 Loise could be sell trade on dollar yen. Next question, Agilis is asking about New Zealand dollar. Uh, New Zealand dollar, let's see for our time frame. Rejecting. One hour rejecting. This doesn't, yeah, this looks like it could be inverted head and shoulders. So it looks like it could go up, but still don't forget that ATR of New Zealand dollar is not that big. Okay, I will put ATR indicator right away. Okay, let's ADTR 14. Okay, just a few seconds. Okay, here. So ATR, only 61 pips. You see the ATR of uh, New Zealand dollar is bad. Re I mean bad. It's very, very low. I don't like uh, when I see that low of ATR. It's, it's very, 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 very small. So I think this could be a buy trade, but this could also potentially be resistance. So from technical perspective, this could go up. But I don't think it could go up much. 
Uh, Sean, I uh, replied about dollar yen, so 130, 50 to 65 sell. Uh, uh, Luca, I'm short on pound yen from 144.92. Do you think that this pair will drop or it's better to close the order? Uh, well, Luca, it depends of your uh, risk. If your risk is 2% and you are now at 2 or 3% of risk, then you might close it. Because you see, I mean, it still has the room to go down. But you see, it's it started to reject already. So... Very occasionally, when pound yen is going up, pound dollar is dropping so you you should be careful with this this could be a drop but also you see it's in the POC zone and if you followed my analysis today you should have gone long because I actually uh, went long today I'm not sure that you read my analysis at forexempire.com I will try to find it now. I published the analysis. And uh, let's see if it's technical. Let's see. Just give me a few seconds. Here. On forexempire.com, pound yen pullback is possible. And I said... The zone was 145, 40 to 60. So if you traded this setup, you could have made 50 pips. So what I think is if it gets there, it might drop then. Because usually the first rejection is the most profitable. The second and subsequent rejections are not that profitable. So I would say it could drop. It could drop, but only only if it breaks ATR low and EMA 89. 145.35. If it breaks it, then it would go down. The question, how did I come with analysis for I'll buy in Australian, in Australian dollar? Naivin, here. Australian dollar. Seventy three zero zero. Here. You need to draw up a little bit uh, bigger chart, and you can actually you can even use. I I I have chosen this triple bottom here but you can actually use also the level here because but it doesn't matter it's still in the zone so if you actually put the order blocks here see this is a huge support and here you have actually another support order block okay so this could be actually the first rejection at the very, very low. So monthly L5, 78.6. Weekly L4, uh, this is, POC, this is uh, order block. And historical buyers, so they all align into this zone. So 73.15, 73.00, 72.85. This could be a buy trading opportunity. Rohan is saying thank you very much. You guys are really amazing. Thank you, Rohan. So, yes, we are traders and analysts, so we do it for you also, guys, covering you on these trades. Mario is asking what kind of indicators uh, are we using for this template? I'm using my and elite currency indicators. Uh, MACD, Camarilla, Elite Currency, Pivot Point, uh, Fibonacci, a, a, a ATR Indicator, and so on. So EMA89. So it's basically price action and not a lot of indicators. 
because I'm following the, the price. Mario, if you want some of them, just send us an email. Uh, another question, guys. Uh, yes, here. Eurocat apparently SHS. SHS means shoulder, head, shoulder or head and shoulders pattern so let's see if we see the pattern here uh, but i need to find dollar cat i'm not sure that i have it here symbols uh not dollar cat but euro euro cat it's probably okay but it shouldn't be here it's on the i need to find it just give me a little bit just give me a little bit of break here from yeah, here, Eurocad. Yeah, okay, Eurocad. One hour time frame. Yes, head and shoulders definitely here. Here, guys, head and shoulders. Left, head right, shorting from the top of the right shoulder. Continuation expected below the neckline. Okay, we could actually say that this is the neckline. Here. But I, I would I would go like this. So yeah, continuation below the neckline confluence of daily L4. Uh, also, if you follow my price action analysis, then guys, you, you need to know that I usually short uh, from the top of the right shoulder here. So yeah, this could be it. Or at least here, if you align left with right shoulder. So yes, this is SHS pattern or how traders call it head and shoulders and we also have a nickname for this for this uh, pattern we call it uh, shampoo pattern because head and shoulders is the brand of a famous shampoo uh, Harshana is asking about dollar Swissy okay dollar Swissy dollar Swissy it's just a counterpart of uh, euro dollar so I don't follow it that much uh, because I'm, I, I trade either Euro Dollar or Dollar Swiss. You see, uh, but bigger range now on Dollar Swiss. It's now bottom dips. On four hour time frame, it's at WH5, so it could start to reject. This is double, this is V shaped reversal. So if you want to sell it, I think this could be the zone for you. On another spike, this could be the zone. For a sell trade opportunity and euro dollar could go up you see it's already started to reject a little bit for from our POC zone uh, Angel is saying energy the best thanks Angel uh, uh, Gulad is saying a uh, lots of economical events uh, yes but rate decision Gulad is the most important one uh, bid rate decision and statement BOE statement. Uh, Marco is asking where did I found where did I find 1020? Historical sellers. 1015. But also ten fifteen, ten twenty, ten twenty-five, median is ten twenty. So you see a lot of lot of selling historically from this zone, and don't forget, Marco, that twenties, uh, zero zero, eighties, and fifties are natural support and resistance. Uh, especially on euro dollar, it likes euro dollar likes twenties. Uh, Rohan, lots of education here. I have learned a lot from you guys and also made money. That is what I like to hear, Rohan, that you made money. Excellent, excellent. That is what I really like to hear. Uh, Ro is asking, uh, dollar Swiss ATR 58, but today it range up to 120. Well, it, it went up. Uh, I might uh, say maybe it was also due to oil, but also because uh, Euro dollar tanked and dollar Swiss was definitely bigger mover. So that is why dollar Swiss went to the upside because of that. 
Uh, Franjo, is it not uh, uh, SHS before confirmation? Uh, Franjo, old school, old school usually says confirm at neckline. Uh, I, I quitted with old school teaching five, six years ago when I, or maybe it was like seven years ago, when I developed practical naked trading. In my practical naked trading, I have taken all old school teachings and adopted it to fit present time. So I don't trade at the trade of neckline. I don't believe that uh, you can trade uh, like you traded 10 or 15 years ago. My uh, personal opinion and how I trade and teach is that we always need to adapt to present market conditions. If we see a confluence at the top of the right shoulder, we can also go short. So if we see a confluence of Fibonacci, ATR pivot resistance at the top of the right shoulder, then it's the way to short uh, head and shoulders or SHS. Confirmation or a continuation can only come, I mean, I, would, I don't say confirmation. For me, enough of confirmation is confluence zone. But continuation, I rather want to say continuation, that is below the neckline. Big money learned that uh, they can easily stop out traders who start to short from here. They can easily spike the price up and then reverse it down. So that is why I don't believe in old school saying that uh, SHS patterns can be shorted at the break of that one. Uh, Mario is saying, nice nickname, you can call King Crown. Mario, yeah, uh, an old uh, nickname, Tarantula, <laughs> indeed. Uh, Franjo is saying thank you very much. You're welcome, Franjo. Uh, da Daniel, thanks for analysis. Uh, you're welcome, Daniel. Uh, Marco, thanks, Senad. You motivated me for further trading in Ljubljana seminar. Thank thanks a lot, and you're welcome, Marco. Of course, uh, I will be glad to come again, of course, in Ljubljana. And Eric, yes, Eric, great seminar. Yes, guys, yes, we need to adapt to current market conditions. Uh, current market conditions definitely are different than 10 and 15 years ago. Uh, Harshana, I've recently noticed that pound and pairs respect Camarilla levels very much. Has it always been like that? Special reason. The last, que the last uh, question for this webinar and my, last, and my answer to this question is, Harshana, yes, I am a big fan of Camarilla since I have started to, uh, to deeply, deeply study Camarilla indicator, uh, that is because big banks uh, use Camarilla, at least that is what my friend told me also. And uh, since then, I've been a big fan of Camarilla. Camarilla levels are very, very, uh, are respected definitely in Forex trading. Uh, Jeff is saying thanks again, Anna. So guys, thank you for, thank you everyone. Thanks for all of your comments. These are setups. Don't forget for all newcomers. And I saw a lot of, lot of people here today uh, so guys, one final advice for you, uh, we trade in the zone. As I already explained, the zone is what matters and you don't move your stop loss. Thanks guys, thanks for your comments, talk to you soon. Cheers everyone, trade safe.